All right, so write equations for lines. Given the sloppage and a point, number one. Well, actually, that's kind of an example there on the left, which has been done for you. And it's very nice of them to have done these. It tells us a point that the line is going through and then gave us the sloppage. Okay. So if we can draw the line and the y-intercept is something extremely convenient like this one is, what's uh, the point there, the y-intercept? Zero, 1, right? Yeah, this is the example we're still looking at. And then we can see the sloppage. They even drew a little uh, sloppage triangle for ye. And it's very convenient because it just continues on and on and on. Forever and ever and ever. So, uh, well, after we know that, uh, since we knew the sloppage was 1, you can write a 1 right here. And then we got the y intercept right here. So y equals mx plus b. Bam! And then we're pretty good to go there. Okay, well, it says it goes through this point, uh, negative 1, 5, which would be, I got that right here. Well, then we got a sloppage of 2. So I'm going to make some right triangles, or some sloppage triangles up here, up 2 to the right 1, because our sloppage, right, is 2. I'm just going to make that 2 over 1, up 2 to the right 1. Bam, there's my next point. Up to the right one. There's the next one. But I can continue this pattern down these way up and down. So this is good. Just If you do this without putting points after each stair step, if you will, then you just have to remember that these ones would be in the middle of the stairs. Like at these. Now, what we can do is draw a line through the points. There's our line through the points. You guys remember what we do if we miss the points? Make it bigger. Yeah, just make the point bigger, okay? So there we go. That works out pretty good. Well, uh, the reason why it's not so important that a uh, line hits all the points is because, uh, well, we can see the points there, and you've drawn your sloppage triangles. So it may not be the prettiest thing, but it works. Well, if I wanted to write the equation for these, right, I got a y equals mx plus a b like these, up in here. Well, do we know the sloppage? Sure. It's a 2. So I'm just going to replace my sloppage with 2. And what is the y-intercept? 7. Uh, zero, uh, open oh, yeah, it was. Seven. Yeah, very good. It was 0, 7, so the B value is 7. There we go. And behold, the equation for the line. Good luck. So, it says there is one point, there is a point at one, one and four, uh, four, one, sorry. So, you go up four, to the right one, right there, yep. And then it says it has a sloppage of negative two. Negative one half, sorry. So you would go down one and to the right two. Do that. Up. Thing. Yeah, sorry. There. Point there. Point there. Okay. Then do that the other way. And connect all of those. So uh, then 
you would write y equals the slope is negative one half x plus the y intercept right here I believe and that's at five plus five. Alright, excellent work. Thank you. Well, some of you guys have questions, though, so what the heck is going on here? Uh, Harrison? Um, didn't you, like, put the point in the wrong spot? Because the X is the 4, and then the Y is the 1, so it would be over 4, and then up. Yeah. Uh-oh. What? You were pointing in the wrong spot for the 4, comma 1. You did it one time. <laughs> now, here's the thing, all right, is everything else was excellent on that, okay? It was just the point that we started with that made that a little confusing. In addition to that, the point that is the y intercept right account, we don't really know where that is, okay? I mean, we can estimate and pretty much figure it out, but uh, in reality, we need to know its exact value on that. So let's see if this won't let me move this garbage. No stinking piece of garbage. It will look uh, pretty much uh, exactly the same. We're just going to move it, right? I know. Um, so you go over four and you go up one. Wow, okay. That's a dot right there. Um, and so what I got is that um, you want to go over two and up one. And you just kind of continue doing that on the graph on both sides. Um, so, the intercept, I got that it was right here, so my equation was y equals negative one-half x plus three, um, and then just draw the line there. Bam. Very good. Thank you. All right. Put a little equal sign right there. All right. Good luck. Okay. So, you go over to the... And then go up to... So, it would be right there. And then you'd go up one and over to the side three. Like that. Oops. I kind of messed up there, but whatever. So, you plot the points on it. Draw the line through. And, um... This it'd be y equals um, one over three um, x plus four because the y intercept is right there. Correct. Very good. But number four, how did you use the graph to write the equation in the lines above? Well, I hope you guys know the answer to that already. Right? So what do you guys think? What would you say we'd done? Yeah, Anna? So on the graph, the plus B in the equation is the y-intercept where it crosses um, the y-intercept. Very good. Now they gave us the the rise over run, right? So the sloppage was given. Uh, but the graph, and that's what Han was say, uh, saying, is the graph gave us 
the oh, hang on, I can spell that right. The Y. Well, it's not H. The Y. Intercept. Decon. Okay. Would it be practical to always graph to find the equation? Why or why not? That's very good, yeah. I'd say it's not practical because then why would they be asking us this question? Okay, that's good enough logic. <laughs> yes, so uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but do you guys think that the Y intercept will always be a nice, pretty whole number yeah. like we've been seeing or some kind of integer value? No, of course not. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get into the uh, fractions and decimals for those as well, okay? Uh, which means the, the graph may not be as specific as we would need it to be. All right, brainstorm ideas on how you could write the equation of a line without graphing the sloppage. Consider how you could use, mm -hmm, use an example from the previous uh, problems through the process or something like that. Okay, well, <clears throat> you guys know in this equation stuff, right? We've got a y equals mx plus a b. Like these. Well, what do y and x represent? The y-intercept. No, that's the b. The b is the y-intercept. Very good. So what do the y, x and the y represent? The y is the y-axis, and the x is the x-axis. You're on the right track there. All right. Well, M is the sloppage. Is it where the line crosses the graph? Um, it depends by what, what you mean by that. Right? So, like, would Y be where it crosses, the line crosses Y? That would be the B value, right? Because that's the Y intercept. Well, X and Y are any, any ordered pairs that are on the line, okay? So, uh, once we know what these then we know we can replace x and y with any point that's on the line. You see that right there? Okay. So to demonstrate this, let me look at uh, number 7 right up and count. So we need to write the equation in slope-intercept form. But what's the problem on this one? Well, there's no graph and there's no y-intercept. So we're going to have to figure that out on our own. Right? So this is the equation, y equals mx plus a b like it oh let me make that a good color here. that's better all right <clears throat> well do we know the slappage on this one no well yeah we do yeah we do on this one right so it gave us a foe do we know the y intercept no no do we know an x value yeah, actually. Yeah, we do, right? We have the x value right here. So I'm going to replace my x with that value, which is negative of 1. Do we have a y value? Sure, right here. So I'm going to replace the y with that negative 6. Now, if we solve this equation that we have now, what would we have solved it for? The y intercept, very good. So, let us solve. Mm. Well, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And I still got this negative 6 equals that stuff. Negative 4 plus b. Well, what would I do now to solve this? Add four. Yeah, add 4 to both sides, right? This is all from unit 1, which was a little while ago, but doable. So negative 6 plus 4, I get negative 2 equals, well, all I, this is a zero pair, so I get a B. Well, do we have our y-intercept now? Yes. Yes, we does. And we could write the equation y equals, we know the sloppage, 4 times the x, and then in this case it would be minus 2 because it's a B value of negative 2. There it is. 
Now there are other ways, and we're going to go over that actually, but uh, this is one valid method which you may use in order to find the y-intercept. If you're given the sloppage, okay? Again, if you're not given the sloppage, you just have to find it on your own. So here's the thing is, um, sometimes you're not given the sloppage, and that's okay again, but um, right, we've already gone over sloppage inter intercept form. So we get uh, y equals mx plus b, where m is the sloppage, b is the y-intercept. But here's the problem. They won't always give us that y-intercept, which can be problematic. And you could use that previous technique in order to solve for it. However, there is a different way, and that is point sloppage form. So it is exactly how it sounds, right? Like uh, in slope-intercept form, they give you the slop, they give you the y-intercept. So they call it slope-intercept form. This, in this case, they'll give you a point and a slope, and then you just use this form in order to simplify it in a slope-intercept form. Let's look at it. So it kind of starts by setting up this way. Uh, sloppage is still kind of the coefficient of that set of parentheses, but now we're going to have some kind of x value from the point, which is considered x1, and also a y value from the same point, which is y1 as well. We've kind of used this format for numbers in uh, the sloppage equation. So again, x1 and y1 just come from a point, an ordered pair, x1, y1. So you see, if, if we get a point, we just replace the x and y values there and then the sloppage, and then we can simplify that by distributing the m and then combining like terms. So it usually only takes two steps. Every once in a while, in unique cases, it takes three. Well, let's take a look at number eight then. And this time we will use point slope form. So let's write that out. All right, there's our point slope form. And right here, we can see that we are given the sloppage. The sloppage of, right here, m is a negative two thirds. It's supposed to be thirds. All right, and then do we have an x value from a point? Sure does. Now I'm going to just change that to a plus 3 because it was minus negative 3. So I'm kind of skipping a step there. hope that's all right. And then we have the corresponding y value, which is 4. So the negative 3 went here, and the 4 went right here. Question. So... The 4 right here, it's a y value, but it's not the y-intercept. How do we know that's not the y-intercept? That is correct. This negative 3 right here is, well, it's not 0. So uh, we know it's not the y-intercept. We'll need to use this if we prefer this method. All right, well, let's go ahead and simplify these by distributing a negative 2 thirds into the parentheses. So what's negative 2 thirds times x? I get negative two-thirds x. Is that okay? Yeah. That's a good point. All right, then what's negative two-thirds times a plus three? I get uh, negative two out of that. All right. Well, let's look at that then. You got negative two-thirds times the three, right? I'm going to make that three over one. Uh, so we're going to multiply the numerators. That's negative six, negative two times three. And then the denominator is 3 times 1 is 3. Now, yes, some of you guys would have simplified right here, but we didn't. So what's negative 6 divided by 3? Negative 2, and that's what we have right here. Oh, what the heck. I got a y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2, but don't forget that we have that plus 4 up in here. Okay? We don't have to distribute that negative 2 thirds to the 4 because it's not part of the parentheses. Hopefully you guys remember that is kind of what multiplication is. It tells us how many groups of something we have, and it's not saying that we have negative two-thirds groups of four. All right, well, if I combine like terms up in here, right, I can combine this minus two plus four, which would be, I get a positive two out of that. So that's a y equals a negative two-thirds x plus two. There's no other terms that I can see that we can combine. So it looks like this is our answer. Yeah, I like the first one. So let's do it the other way. Yeah, because I did it the first way. way and I got B equals 2. Yeah. 
And so you got the same answer from it, right? And that's what you should get. So let's look at that. A hua equals mx plus a b. Right? And again, we were given some sloppage. So I'm going to replace that garbage. And were we given an x value? Yes, we was. The x value is a negative 3. Again, it's from the point right here. And we were also given a y value, which was pho. So if I multiply these, negative 2 thirds times negative 3, I should get 2 out of that. Hopefully you got the same thing. So I got 4 equals 2 plus a b. And now to solve for b, I would simply mm, subtract 2 from both sides. So I get 2 equals the b value. And that's what we got in the equation right account. Extremely convenient. Good luck. Thank you. So I'm going to be using the intercept method. So... This is the y-intercept, so we can plug that in. It's y equals mx plus b. So we can see here that m equals 3 over 2. And then we can plug in 4, and then we can add a b. So then when you times 3 over 2, you can just kind of <laughs> add a 1 over, under that, and then you get... Um, negative 1 equals 12 over 2 plus b. And then you can simplify the 12 over 2 to just 6. So then you get 1 equals 6 plus b. And then you can minus 6 on both sides. And then you can get b equals negative 7. Bam. One, one more thing here. Wait, so wait. Uh, hold on, hold on. Would you mind writing the equation then, please? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's just y equals mx plus b. Okay? Yeah, so replace the m with the sloppage. Oh. Um, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so y would equal 3 over 2x plus b. I cannot oh, write today. And what was our y-intercept? Yeah, negative 7, right? We'll just make that minus 7 right here. There it is. Now let's look at that point slope form. Uh, y equals m. What was it? Uh, 3 halves? 3 halves. And then times the x plus 4. Because it was a negative 4 for the x, right? And then was it a minus 1? Yeah. Is that right? All right, so we should have got something like this. When we distribute that 3 halves, we should get 3 halves x plus, again, this should be, wait, what the heck happened here? Is that 4 positive? Oh, yeah, it was a positive 4, right? Mm -hmm. Since that's a positive 4, the operation between will remain a oh, minus. Okay. Yeah, and that would change that into a minus 7 for you. Yeah, simplify this, we'd get the same thing. Y equals 3 halves x minus a 7. All right. Thank you, Gavin. Okay, so I'm going to do the, like the, I don't know what it's called, like the equation form, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but like the one that we did last time, I guess, on number 7. Four. Okay. <laughs> So, so y in this is 2, and then x uh, and then equals, and the uh, m is 1, and then 3 plus b. Ah. Okay, and then if you times these, that would be... Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, that is right. Um, wait. Yeah, then 3. So 2 equals 3 plus B. And then subtract 3 from both sides.
then that would be negative 1 uh, equals oh, oops, equals plus uh, equals b then the equation would be wait yeah then the equation would be y equals um wait yeah I think so yeah y equals um let's see hmm. shoot y or just be y equals be mx plus b, right? Yeah, mx plus b, which would be, oh yeah, I'm so stupid, yeah, 1, 1x, one and then plus, and then that would be negative 1. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I couldn't find all my paper. No, you're that's fine. I was confused. It's great. So yeah, let's just write this over here. Yeah. y equals a 1x, we'll just make that a minus 1, is that all right? Yeah. So, uh... That way it's fully simplified right account. Okay? Yeah, we kind of run out of space. Sorry, right, that's all I can do with the iPad. Number 11 is full of some tricky business because it has an undefined sloppage. So the trickiness on this one is because the M is, unde is undefined, right? So it's hard to, to write this as Y equals undefined. X plus B, right? That's garbage. Or I guess instead of undefined, maybe you'd prefer to write the... Maybe you guys have seen this symbol before, undefined, like this. Yeah, that doesn't really mean anything in terms of, well, math, other than the sloppage is undefined. So, uh, we need to look back and remember... Let's look at the graph like these. Okay, so let's say this, this point goes through a 3, 5, so B maybe somewhere about right here, right? Well... An undefined sloppage means what? They don't know what the slope is. It means that we can't define the slope, really. So we do know what it is. Yeah? Um, You're on the right track. You are on to something right there. If it's not horizontal, then it must be vertical. This one's straight up and down, you guys. So what's the y-intercept on this thing? There isn't any. There's no y-intercept, right? And again, that's, that makes it hard to write it as plus none, right? So, uh, what do we do? Well, since it's just a vertical line, instead of y equals, this one becomes x equals. And what would the x value be? Well, we can see that it's 3. Meaning that everywhere on this line... The x value is 3, no matter what the y value is. So x is 3 no matter what. It's not changing depending on the y. The y is not changing depending on the x. x is just 3 always. Well, now we have the point 3, negative 4, and a sloppage of 0. This one's doable, right? So in our equation of y equals mx plus b... Do we know the sloppage on this line? Sure does. I got a zero right account for my M. Do we have an X value? Yes. Yes, we does. I got an X value three. Do we have a Y value? Sure. Negative four. You guys got that too, I really hope. Well, now all I'm gonna do is solve this thing. So zero plus uh, zero times three is zero. So I got negative 4 equals 0 plus b. Uh, then I just subtract 0 on both sides. Nope, just cancel it away. Negative 4. Well, b is negative 4, right? So in the equation, now that's not the answer, by the way. It's y equals, I got a sloppage of 0 times the x. And then I got a b value that is negative 4. Again, if you wanted to write this, Fully simplified, y equals negative 4, that's okay. But I'm okay with either of these. Yeah. Find, fix, and justify. Philippe was asked to write the equation of the line that passes, I'm sorry, that has a slope of one-third, and passes through the point 6-fold. 
Oh, what the heck. Philippe made a common error and wrote the equation y equals one third x plus four. Now we did talk about this, we addressed this already, so hopefully we understand what his error was, and we can write the correct equation below as well. So what did he do, you guys? What did he do? He replaced the point. You guys see that? We talked about it. The point intercept with the point value. And they are different from the point, which is not the point intercept. Okay. So, now that we know that, <clears throat> again, this is a very common error, so we need to keep that in mind. We can use sloppage intercept form, though. Let's do point slope form just so you guys can see it again, all right? So there we go. Did it give us a sloppage on this one? Sure did. I find that the sloppage was originally given as one-third. So we'll plug that in. And then we have the x and y value right here. Our x value is 6, and the y value is 4. Just like at these. Well, to solve, I'm just going to distribute my one third. So one third x minus what's one third times six? You could use a calculator for this, by the way. I get two. Very good. And then we got that plus four still. This is all equal to y. So when I combine my like terms, I got my sloppage still one third x. But now I got negative two plus four. Man, that's a plus two. Did we already have this exact same equation before? It sounds familiar, but maybe it's different. I don't know. So unlike the first few problems that we did with the graphs, this one does not give us a sloppage. Is that going to be a problem? No, it will not. In addition to that, can we see where this line crosses the y-axis? We can see it, but we don't really know exactly where that is, okay? So don't estimate or guess on these. We need to make sure using either point-slope form or that slope-intercept form method to find the y-intercept. So let's figure out another point on the line that we can use the sloppage for. And I see, I see this one. Yeah, and the dotted one, yep. So the two points I got, I got 3, 5. And then this one is a 5, 8. So using my sloppage triangle on at the east, I go up three, and then to the right two. Both of those are positive, so I can see my sloppage is three halves. Well, now that I have that, what I'm going to need is to use one of those two forms to find the y-intercept. All right, so let's use this form, but again, we've already found the sloppage. Was not given to us, but that's uh, that turned out to be okay. We got a three halves. And then uh, we have the x value from either one of those points, really. It doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to use 3, 5, though. That would be okay. Satisfactory. And the y is a 5 value. So now when I simplify these, I got 3 halves times 3. That would be 9 halves. And I still got the 5 over here. So 5 equals 9 halves plus a b. So 9 halves plus what is 5? Well, to solve that one, we'll just subtract 9 halves from both sides. So 5, I'm going to do this one over here, 5 minus 9 halves. That's 5 over 1, which I need common denominators to subtract at these. So I'm going to change 5 into 10 halves. So 10 halves minus 9 halves, uh, that should be 10 minus 9 over 2 like this. Not everyone does it this way. But 5 minus 9 halves is 1 half. And that is our B value. That's good. That's a zero pair. Now that we have the B value, we should be able to write this equation. Hua equals mx, and we know the m is a 3 half. And then the hua intercept was 1 half. There it is. 
Okay, well, this one also gives us a point right here. Uh, that would be point one one. And then it doesn't matter which other point we use. I'm going to use this one just so we can see the triangle from the sloppage. And we can see going from left to right, I would go down two. So my sloppage is down two and then to the right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this should simplify to a negative one fourth. That's my sloppage. All right, so we'll use this form because you guys like it so much. Uh, but I've already found the sloppage to be negative one fourth. And we have the point one one that we can use on the D's. So I'll replace those up and count. Y is 1, and so is X. That's convenient. So, when simplifying these, negative 1 fourth times 1 is still negative 1 fourth. And so 1 equals negative 1 fourth plus B. And to solve this one, I would add 1 fourth to both sides. Well, 1 plus 1 fourth, yeah, that's going to give us 5 fourths. 5 fourths is the B value, so the equation is Y equals sloppage is negative 1 fourth X plus this 5 fourths. Bam. They were extremely generous on this first one because it's just an example, so they've done it for you. Uh, but it's important to see what they have done. They've given you a point, and then they gave you some sloppage, and then they graphed it. So, how do we do this? Well, you start by graphing this point, 2, 3, which is right account. And then you use the sloppage to find all the other points. You can make your stair steps if you prefer. Uh, the choice is yours. But there's some stair steps, very nice. And then uh, you've, got, uh, you've got the line. But what we really need to write the equation for this thing is the point intercept. Now they did give us a sloppage, so we just got to continue this down until we find the point intercept right account, which was at 0, 1. And that is why they have this equation here at the bottom. Y equals, you can make that a 1x if you wanted to. It's not necessary that you do, though, but uh, you can. Y equals 1x plus a Juan. So let's graph the line first, and then we will find the equation for these. So I've got a point at negative 1, 5, which would be right here. And then I'm going to use the sloppage to find my other points. The sloppage, as we can see, is 2, or 2 over 1, which allows me to see the rise and the run. So I go up 2 to the right 1, up 2 to the right 1. That's as far as that'll go. But I can go in the other direction as well. That's pretty nice. Nice set of stairs. <clears throat> well, then each of these represents a point on the line. Like these. And then we just got to connect the points. Bam. Nailed it. <clears throat> so there's our line. There's the points. It did want us to graph, but now it wants the equation. So the equation should be in the form y equals mx plus a b. And we can see up here that the sloppage m is 2. So I can replace m with 2. And then we can see from the graph that the y intercept right here is at 0, 7. So this plus b is going to actually end up being plus 7. There it is. All right, <clears throat> number two. Let's go ahead and graph this point as well. I've got the point four Juan, which would be right account. And then I got my sloppage, which is at negative one half. So we can, I'm just gonna make this negative one over two, which indicates that I go down one to the right two, which would give me my next point. And then this pattern continues. But that doesn't show me where 
Uh, where or what the y intercept is, so I've got to go in the other direction using the same pattern. Could you do so I got my stair steps up and down. And then we got all these points like these. So if I connect these. Is it, doesn't it go down though? Because you go down one and then over two? Yeah, that is downwards. But I got it backwards. Well, then you got it backwards. I got it so that that is like here, and so it's going up, not wrong. down. Oh, then you probably had a sloppage of <coughs> maybe negative two over one. Or two over one, like we did on the last one. No, this one is down one to the right two. Well, yeah, this is something you guys actually should know by this time. That negative one over two is the same as one over negative two. Like this. Um, both of those are the same, and you guys should know that. One negative gives us a negative answer. That's what the original slope was telling us. But now that we have this, anyways... Uh, we can see that the y-intercept is right here at 0, 3. And now we're ready to write our equation. Oh, that's not M. It's supposed to be Y. Y equals an MX plus a B. I knew that. And we can see that the sloppage, once again, is a negative 1 half. So I'm just going to replace the M with negative 1 half. And the B value here is at a positive 3. Zero three. That's it. There we go. All right. Good luck. Okay. So, um, we have to first find the, um, the like where to put the first point, which is negative six two. So. Over 6 and up 2 is right there. And then um, then it's a slope of 1 third. So you go up 1, up 1, over 3, up 1, over 3, up 1, over 3. And, um, because, uh, right here is where the y-intercept is, then, um, that's the y-intercept is going to be, uh, the y-intercept is going to be zero, and then it goes up, um, one, two, three, four. So zero, four. And so then the equation is in the y equals m x plus. Is there more? Okay, wait. Um, So y equals m x plus b, and so the slope is one third. Sometimes after you move it, it won't work. Let's see. I'll just do this. Just right over it. Okay, so it's um, one third x plus um, four as the y intercept. Excellent. Thank you. All right, now on a test, this is pretty good. The only thing we need to change, does anyone know what it is? It's just the graph, and we just need to finish the graph. Oh, so. put a line. So we got uh, the rest of this uh, stuff right again. It goes over there, that's better. Yeah, so that, and then, yeah, we do need to draw the line as well. 
So let's see if we can get the line to go up in here. You have to draw some pictures. What? Like on the text, if you didn't draw a staircase, it would be a document. Um, depends on what it asks for. And yes. How did you use the graph to write the equation of the lines above? Well, let's go ahead and write this in here. Here's what we did. We graphed, we grafted the point, getting, then we used the sloppage to find the other points using, uh, we'll put stairs, not stair steps, that's too big of a word. Bam, that's what we did. If we didn't put some what about number five? Would it be practical to always find, always graph to find the equation? Yes. Well, what do you guys think? Yes. We no, it would not. That was a nice setup there, by the way. No, it is not. Here is why. Uh, because. Does anyone know why, actually? No. Because you said. Because. Well, you use your yeah. Because sometimes you have both of the things, and so you don't need the graph. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Yeah, sometimes that's, that's good. Sometimes graphing actually would make it more difficult. In other words, uh, but sometimes it's because the y-intercept y-intercept is not a an integer. An integer. Yeah, I spelled that right. That's good. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I may not laugh out loud, but I do laugh at you guys. No, no, not like that, for the most part. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't really care about you. It. That's, that's something you guys did. Why not? All right. That's good. Here we go. What we need right here is to write the equation in sloppage intercept form. But now we're again we're gonna have to do it without the graph. So here we go. This is how uh, this is how we're gonna do it. We gotta look back and think about uh, good old sloppage intercept form. Hopefully you guys remember this garbage because of all the forms, this is one of the most important ones. Phi equals m x plus a b. Now m is the sloppage and uh, b is the phi intercept. But this is the question you guys kind of miss from before. Is, uh, what does the x and y represent in the equation right here? The y-axis and the x-axis. No, it does not. Well, then why do they have a y and an x? Well, that's why we got to go over this. The y and the x represent points, x and y values corresponding, on the line. Well, it just told us a value of x and y that are on the line up a hill. Negative 1 is the x value, negative 6 is the y value. So, what this means is in the equation right here, I can replace the y with that same y value, in this case, negative 6, and I can replace the x value with the x value given in the point, which is a negative of 1. Well, the other piece of information they gave us was the y intercept, which is fewer. And what does B represent? Yeah, that's, that, that is correct. B is the y intercept. So if I asked you guys if you could solve this for the y intercept, how many guys could do that? None of you could. Two. Two people could. All right, well, then we better go over this, and you guys should pay attention, all right? So... Right here, I'm going to take 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. It's still plus b, by the way. Now, before we were using something like uh, x, but uh, it doesn't matter. Now, I would add 4 to both sides to solve for b. And I get negative 2 equals a b. Now, I'm, now I can write 
the equation in sloppy genocide form. I got a point equals mx, but m up a hyun is 4, and my point intercept right a hyun is negative 2. This makes sense. I got that right. All right, sloppy intercept form. <laughs> this is something. Yeah, you guys know. This is something you guys should have down pretty good by now. Y equals mx plus b. Yeah, like a these. And we know that good old sloppage is the m. And then uh, the b is the y intercept. Well, this is one form, and you guys saw that this is one way, one type of equation that we can use to solve for the y intercept. Uh, but most people don't like this form uh, or how to use it to find the y intercept. They prefer what is called. And we saw that in the last problem. What were the two things they gave us? They gave us a point and the sloppage. So there's something called point slope form. So naturally, they will give you the, a point and then maybe sometimes a sloppage. If not the sloppage, then you just got to figure it out. And this is point slope form. We got a hua equals. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the foundation of what it should look like. But we've still got some sloppage, m, right here. But we got the point, okay? You can have an x value and a y value from the point. That's what the green x and y be. So that would come from a point that is on the line. It doesn't matter what point it is, because these are linear equations as long as the sloppage is the same, okay? Which is what makes it linear. So, uh, sometimes you'll get a point and some sloppage, and then you can use this, which is what we will do on the next problem. Nice. So here's the next, here's the next question. Let's set this up using point slope form. All right, so here is the equation, slope intercept, uh, point slope form rather. Y equals m times the quantity x minus x of one, and then we got the plus the y one right here. So uh, we can see that the sloppage on this thing, which is shown right here, is negative two-thirds. So I got negative two-thirds. And then I've got my x and y value up in here. And so I'm going to replace my x with, in this case, negative three. And then I'm going to replace my y value with what looks like a positive four. Well, one quick thing on this is we got the minus a negative 3, which is the same as plus 3. You guys should know that already. Yeah. Uh, so if you make we mistakes on it, I know, so if you make mistakes on that stuff, just know you may get like a maximum of 2, okay? All right. Now what we're going to do is distribute this negative 2 thirds in. It's only two steps from point slope form to get the slope intercept form. Distribute, that's the first step. So now I got a y equals negative two-thirds times x is negative two-thirds x. Negative two-thirds uh, two times three is a negative two. And then, of course, we got this plus four out here. Well, now all I've got to do is combine like terms. So I got y equals negative two-thirds x. And I combine negative two and four to get a positive two. I'm so smart. I just made an invention. All right, here I've got a line going through four negative of one with the sloppage of three halves. Uh, so the question now is, because you guys have multiple methods to use, which one do you guys want me to use? The second one. The second one. I heard the second one. The first one. The well, we can one make some, all right? It. So I'm going to do this one using the second method, and then I'll do the next one using the first method, all right? Okay. So let's set this up, point slope form. All right, so I got this set up. And right here, I can see that my sloppage is 3 halves, so I will replace my m with 3 half. And then I've got an x value of 4 and a y value of negative 1, so I'm just going to make that minus 1 up in here. So this is the general point slope form, but now we just need to simplify this so that it will become slope intercept form. So I got y equals two -thirds, uh, sorry, 3 halves times x is a 3 halves x. And then 3 halves times negative 4, I get a negative 6. And then I got minus a 1. Well, this should come out to 1 equals a 3 halves x. 
And then I just need to combine my negative 6 and minus 1, which I get is negative 7. Done. So you guys want a slope-intercept form on this one, so let's use that. Uh, slope-intercept form. All right. Well, they did give us some sloppage. So I'm going to replace my M, which is shown right now, what? No. with no. 1. Wait. All right. And now I'm going to replace my X with the 3, which is shown in the point 3. And then I'm going to replace the Y also with the 2. All right. Now I got 1 times 3, which is 3. So I got 2 equals 3 plus a B. And some of you guys would just ask yourself, self, 3 plus what is 2? And you would find the answer. Others of you would replace this with a minus 3 on both sides. Then you got negative 1 equals B. Well, that will allow us to make the equation. Hua equals M, which is a Juan. And then the B value right here is a minus 1. Done. Now just keep in mind, it doesn't matter which method you like, you should get the same answer either way. Okay. Uh, this method, uh, well, e either method won't work for this one. Here's why. The sloppage is undefined. Well, we did talk about these types of lines, though. You guys remember what they look like? Yeah, up and down, very good. So in other words, if I graph this on some kind of a graph like these, then it would look like a D, so up and down, right? So this gives us a sloppage that's undefined, and uh, what's the y-intercept? There is none. There is none. So we can't just write this in slope-intercept form because the slope's undefined, and there's no such thing as the y-intercept for these. So we need to write this much differently. Do you guys remember? No. We've done some. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, let's look at 3, 5, which would be about right here. Okay, right, this would be 3, 5. Uh, what would be the point right here on uh, the x-axis? 3, zero. Yeah, 3, 0, actually. Right? What about this point? What do you guys think that would be about? 3, 5. Negative, negative, three, negative, negative five. 5. Well, still 3, but now negative 5, right? So what do you guys notice about the x values on this? Always is 3, so x is 3. That's the equation. What? All right, let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, this one. Let's use, um, okay, so we'll do y equals mx plus b stuff on this one. It should be pretty clear what the heck is going to happen on this thing anyways. Because a slope-intercept form would give us y equals mx plus b, right? And we're just solving for the y-intercept. Now, we have a zero for our sloppage, so it doesn't matter what I put in there for the x, it's still going to uh, kind of cancel itself out. So, uh, let's see anyways. My x value is a 3, and my y value is a 4. So, 0 times 3 is 3. I've got that plus a b. And this needs to equal 4, right? It's uh, negative 4. Negative 4, that's what I meant. Seems like you guys should be telling me something else, though. No. Um, three times um, zero yeah, is zero. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Good. Okay. Three times zero is zero, right? Well, zero plus what is negative Let's four? Let's do it out for a second. Negative four. Yeah, good. Negative four is B. So, when we write the equation, we got Y equals zero X plus B, which is a negative four. Uh, so, this is... Kind of the informal version in other classes, just so you know, the teacher will not give you full credit for that. You'll need to write this as y equals negative 4. I'm okay with either one, though. No. Number 13. This is a common mistake. It's so common that even though we go over it, you guys still make the same mistake on the test, okay? Most of the time, it's because you guys are just being lazy and won't do the stinking work. Or look at the problem. Other times it just means that you don't really understand what the y-intercept actually is. So, here is what Felipe did. Yeah, or don't care either way. Yep. All right. Felipe. He's written this equation. Y equals one-third x 
plus four. Now the sloppage is one third. It told us that right here. Yeah. But it also says that it passes through this point six fold. Well, Philippe, all he did is he took this four value for my y and just made it the y-intercept. Well, that's not very good because what do we know about the y-intercept? It goes, it's on the y-axis. It's on the y-axis, so what's the x value? It's Yeah, zero and then whatever the value is. Well, that's a six and four, not a zero four. And even the uh, sixes do kind of look like a four, though. So we got to help old Philippe because we're very charitable like that. And we're going to find the actual equation for Philippe. So we'll use a point slope form for these. There's a minus and then a plus right here. And we do have a sloppage of one third. But then we got the point six four. So I'm just going to fill those values in. Bam. From right here. We're just going to distribute the one-third. So one-third times x is one-third x. Minus one-third times six is two. And then we got this plus four on the other side. All right, so on these, to find my y-intercept, negative two plus four is a positive two. And this would be our slope-intercept form of the equation. Again, Felipe got the sloppage right, but the y-intercept was way off. All right, by uh, popular demand, you guys want me to show this using uh, slope-intercept form, so that's what I will do. So sloppage-intercept form, we already have the sloppage of one-third, we just need to figure out what the y-intercept is. So I got one-third, oh, that's not supposed to be an M, that's supposed to be an X right there. And then we got a plus a B. So we can replace the X with the X value that we had, which was 6. Oh, I got a positive 6. Oh, wait, sorry. And then the hua was a fior. So, I got uh, 1 third times 6, which is 2. And so now I got 4 equals 2 plus a b. And to solve for b, I would just subtract 2 on both sides. And I would find that 2 is my hua intercept. So, when I write the equation, I got hua equals 1 third x, the slopage times the x and then plus the y-intercept, or b-value, which is 2. It's the same answer, but you should get either way. Because of the reasons that we talked about before, uh, just figuring out the graph, finding the y-intercept on the graph can be a little difficult, because, as we can see in this one, the y-intercept is kind of on a fractional decimal value, and we don't know exactly where that is. I mean, it looks like one-half, but... We're just guessing. So we need to be able to find the actual value of that uh, using one of the two methods that we have already used. Can we do used. the first method? So yeah, we'll, okay. we'll use the uh, slope-intercept form on this one, and then we'll use point-slope form on the next one. All right, so they did, uh, and this was very generous of them. They gave us this point right up here. And this point right here looks like it's a 3, 5. So another point I see is this one right here, which is at uh, 1, 2, rather. 1, 2, there we go. So when I draw my triangle, like these, it appears that I go up 3, and then to the right 2. So I went up 3 to the right 2. And that gives me my sloppage. All right. So we've identified the sloppage is up 3 to the right 2. I said I'd use... Uh, slope intercept form on this one, so let's do that. I got a y equals m, which is 3 halves, times the x, and then I will add that to the b value. And we have two points actually that we can use, but let's use the one that they gave us, which in this case was 3, 5. So my x value, my x value is 3, and my y value is 5. So this gives me 5 equals 3 halves times 3. You guys need to know how to do this. That gives me 9 halves. And then I got plus b. So how do I solve this? I'm going to subtract 9 halves from both sides. Uh, let me show the work for that. I have 5 minus 9 halves over here. So I've got 5 minus 9 a half. And I'm just going to change 5 
to have a common denominator, I'm going to make it 10 halves. Because 10 halves has the same value as 5. Well, 10 halves minus 9 halves gives us a 1 a half. So that would be the answer here. 1 a half equals the B. So even though we estimated it, it was correct. If you don't show this much work on the test, just don't expect a lot of credit for it. Okay? Uh, besides, we're not even done. We need to write the equation for this thing. Hua equals the sloppage, which we found was 3 half times the x value, and then we got a plus one and a half. Bam, there it is. I get it. Can you just guess that from the beginning, that was one half? The teacher is right. That's why we'll use point slope form on this one, and again, very generously and kindly, they gave us this point right now, which is one, one. Uh, also, that's a very convenient point to use, so let's take a look. So this is big enough to help us find good old sloppage. So I see it goes through that point. I got this point right account as well, which appears to be negative 3, 2. So I can draw my right triangle like these. And it looks like I go down 1 and then to the right 4. So my sloppage should be negative 1 fourth. All right. Now I said I'd use point slope form on this one, so let's set that up. Y equals mx minus the other x value plus the y value. And right now we got a sloppage of negative one fourth. And we got a point that we used one one. So all I've got to do is distribute the negative one fourth. So that would give us negative one fourth x minus negative one fourth times negative one. I'm actually going to make that positive one fourth. And then, of course, we've got that plus 1 up in count. Well, oh, that should, I forgot my x right there. So, now i got y equals negative 1 fourth x. Uh, when I take 1 fourth and add 1, I need to make that 1 over 1 so that I can change the, the denominators to be the same, which should give me uh, 4 over 4. And when I add these, I get... Five fourths. So my final equation, y equals negative one fourth, and that's a positive five fourths. I did it.